So I wanted to make one more video on caching, going over how to update the cache whenever we update one of the listings. So here is our mutation for that. And right now, uh, we update the database right here. And then after that, the cache is going to be stale. So we also want to update the cache as well here. Now, to do that, what we need to have is what the listing looks like after the update happens. And with this listing.update right here, we actually do not get back uh, what the new listing is. But because we're using PostgreSQL for our database, there is a command called returning that can actually return back um, all the data that we just updated. Now, we can only use that with a different syntax of typeorm. So typeorm, you saw the syntax we were using over there. You can also do the same thing with updating using a query builder. So I'm gonna use the query builder for this. And we're gonna make the equivalent statement. So we wanna make the equivalent statement we're using here using the query builder. I'm first going to import this stuff. And then we have to specify what we wanna update. In this case, the listing. And then here we set our data. So I'm just gonna pass the data in. And then here I pass in um, where our where clause. Our where clause is right here. So we're updating the listing that matches this listing ID. So instead of one, we're gonna say listing ID. And so I don't think I've gone over this syntax before, but this is how Typeform does substitutions. So we're saying the column ID is equal to this variable called ID. And then we pass in what the value of that variable is right here. So the ID name here matches the value. Uh, we wanna pass the listing ID value and the ID here is gonna replace the ID here. Um, so that would be, you know, we could just use this with string templates, for example, and do something like this. Uh, but in this case, we're not uh, escaping the value. Uh, this is just a number, or I guess in this case it is a string, so it's good that we're escaping it. So that'll avoid kind of database problems. Typeform will escape this value that you put in. So all right, so we have made an equivalent statement right here. These two are equivalent. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because we want to use this one right here. Now this one lets us add uh, one more value called returning. And I can specify what I want returned and I want everything returned. So now I'm gonna say const result. And just to show you guys what this gives us, I'm gonna log the result. And we can kind of see what we're working with. So now I'm gonna call update and we can see the data that we get back. So this listing ID that I'm updating right here is the old condo. So right now it has a category of condo and I am giving it a new category house. So go ahead and run that. And we can see what we get returned here is an object. And one of the things we get back in the object is a thing called raw. And the raw has exactly what we want. Here's our new object. Uh, and this is what we wanna save and update the cache with. So I'm going to destructure this. So we see there's a key here called raw and that's an array and the first element in the array is what we want. So I'm gonna say raw, and then I'm gonna destructure the array and get the first element, which I'm gonna say, call it new listing. And just to test and make sure this works, I can log new listing and that should display uh, this guy and not have all the other stuff with it. So let's go ahead and update it again. And now we can see we have our new listing and all the data there. And we can see the category is indeed house. All right, so now I want to actually update the Redis cache. So I'm gonna go ahead up here in the context, get Redis. And now there's a function in Redis called um, redis.lset. And here we can specify, uh, one, the key. So that's gonna be the cache. Um, what did I call it? I think a listing cache key, there we go. Uh, and then index being the position in the list that we wanna change. And we actually don't know what this value is. It might be zero, might be five, we don't know. And then lastly, the value. So the value is gonna be json.stringify the new listing. So how do we figure out what this is, what the index is? Well, I think the best way, the currently the only way we have to be able to do that is to get all the values. So I'm gonna say const listing and just go ahead and do L range to get them. And the reason why we have to get them all 
right now is because we're storing them as strings. So there's no way to kind of find the one that we have to update because they're all strings and we need to parse them. So now I'm gonna say, um, find the index here. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna say listings.find, um, is this, I just wanna see what the value, okay, this is anything. So find index. And this is a function that takes a single parameter. And the parameter here is gonna be a function. So the function takes uh, a variable and it's gonna be a string. So it, this loops through this array because this is gonna be an array of strings. We loop through the array and we return true um, whether it's the one we're looking for. So in this case, I'm going to and I don't need to do return, we can do this all in one. I'm going to parse the, uh, the string value and I'm gonna check its ID. So what's gonna get returned is the index where this expression is true. So we are parsing what we're storing in Redis, which is gonna be a listing, we're getting its ID and we're comparing it to the listing ID. And now it should give us the index of uh, which one we need to update and then we're just gonna set that. Uh, and that's the index we're gonna use to actually set here. So let's go ahead and check the whole thing now um, and make sure it works. So let's go ahead and fetch. We see the word house here for the category. I'm gonna call this house two, update, come back over here, fetch. We see house two it does indeed get updated now. So perfect, we're now updating the cache whenever we update uh, a value in the database.